everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable uh, week to this part. Hope you got to it. Got off to a great start. Look, um, I'm going to get to this because there's a lot I'm going to cover in a very short period of time. I didn't want to do three separate videos, so I'm about to combine three topics that are contentious right now that definitely need some time, and I'll probably come back and give each one some individual time, but I wanted to weigh in on this. Um, if you have followed me, you know the routine. If you believe in the work we do, look in the description box and look at the ways that you can give and donate and support the work we do. If you're unfamiliar with the work we do, there's a link to the organization's website where you can follow our work. You can look and see what we've done and what we are doing and continue to do as we expand. Um, again, if you believe in me, uh, show some love, show some support. All right. So first and foremost, I want to talk about real briefly right now, all the disunity and contention and arguing and uh, assaultive behavior going on behind this damn Barbie movie, right? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. No, I don't plan on seeing it. Uh, no, I'm not fitting to malign anybody that does plan on seeing it, but I definitely understand where it's coming from. Everybody has different paradigms and lenses through which they view life, different experiences that shape and form those paradigms. Uh, and unfortunately for black people, most of our paradigms were shaped through Eurocentric structure and constraint. And so everything that we see and give value to probably has a tinge of uh, Euro, Euro influence involved in it. Barbie, whether we want to admit it or not, had a major impact uh, in the middle of the 20th century. And in that 20th century, Barbie and Ken, Barbie and Ken, and it wasn't just little white girls playing with Barbie and Ken, it was a lot of black girls because they weren't pushing black dolls. They weren't giving us the representation we needed in order to feel good about ourselves. We literally, anybody who's old enough or anyone who has put in the time and the work to understand historical influences and how our paradigms and our mentality and our self-esteem and our self-image and so much has impacted and influenced over time. You've heard about the doll uh, experiment. Well, they gave little black girls dolls and asked which one was the most beautiful one. And almost to a person, the little black girls chose the little white dolls over the black dolls and said that the black dolls were ugly. What do you think that came from? That came from a Eurocentric idea of what it is. So you're talking about a doll that's shaped and influenced so much of what's going on right now. You can actually see in this situation our identity crisis. So when I look at it and I see it and I'm going, okay, this is where this is coming from. I understand it, so no, I'm not going to get mad at people because they want to dress up and do whatever they want to do. Um, you know, I don't think that whether you dress up to go to a Black Panther movie, whether you dress up to go to a Barbie movie, I think it's a reflective of the things you love, the things you influence, and I think that um, there are people who feel it's safe to have a diverse appreciation for the life that they've lived. Black Panther is something that's we viewed as radical, even though it was highly Eurocentric uh, and tamed for, for that purpose. Uh, you know, but it had a black person in the lead. It had a black person representing what was presented as a strong black uh, idea. But it, it also presented this person uh, and I'm not talking about Chadwick Boseman. I'm talking about the Black Panther, Tatala. It presented this person who had the ability to go out and restore power to blacks, taking a more peaceful and docile approach. And even though I've never, I haven't watched the sequel to it, I've heard that again, his sister uh, does the same darn own thing, has a chance to end uh life of the enemy and lets them live and for what I understand the precursor is that it's going to come back to hunt them but it, it is what it is it is what we are conditioned to do seek peace in a place of hostility extend peace and courteousness in a place of uh, total turbulence and hostility we just are 
program that way. Number one is we are innately, innately inherited that way. We have warred, but it has always been for different reasons. We don't war from greed. Well, we didn't used to war from greed. We war to defend, to protect uh, value systems, tribes, and and and, uh, and clans. We 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 had a different reason for our engagement against one another and this is not to say it was right or wrong it's to say that the motives were different than it is now but now we are turned against each other even in this you know you know i i'm in a different place my brother malcolm said that we have to be real careful how we talk to and handle people who don't know what we know because we once didn't know it. And I always try to approach life with that mindset that number one, I don't know everything, so I might not be right. I try to be as on point as I can, but there are times that I may be off. So that's the first thing. I, 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 there's no way for me to know 100% certainty because I, don't, I, I never will have all of the information. I'll have as much of it as I possibly can, but I never have it all. So that's that. So, uh, I'm not dressing up to go do no Barbie movie. Probably not even going to see it, but I'm not going to malign the people who do. I am understanding where it's coming from. Uh, I think when you don't have representation and the only things you identify with happen to be of a Eurocentric origin and creation, uh, it's naturally gravitate towards that hell. I mean... The fact that I can sit up and talk about Barbie and Ken, even though I never had a Barbie or a damn Ken, tells you just how influential this was to the childhood of the people that I grew up with and before that and still right now today. It's a reason why you can throw that pink up, have this movie and it explodes that way because that doll was just that influential. So then the idea that all of a sudden we are the most maligned and marginalized people on the planet, all of a sudden, you know, we are going to become awakened and we are going to have a large surge, in, a large surge of black awareness, black pride to the point that we won't show up at this movie, that we won't get on board with a trend that is absolutely ridiculous in expectation. You know, is it a good showing for us? That's up for debate. What's not up for debate is the idea that you can't expect us to all of a sudden be somewhere we haven't been in the last hundred years. You do, you can't expect it. This is where we've been. We've been here. We've been able, they've been able to play this and do this and, and move right along and make plenty of money off us in the process forever. And I don't see that changing anytime soon because we avoid the real, true, substantive content that we need to be consuming in way of sensationalism, in way of being entertained. And so it's so easy to misdirect us. It's so easy to keep our minds off the things that will actually empower us. So that's that. The other one is, okay, this, and this is going to be real short because I get a headache just thinking about this broad. And if you know if I'm calling her abroad, I have absolutely no respect for her whatsoever. Uh, she wear, she has my complexion, but she does not wear uh, my history, my struggle, my, my, my state of mind. She does not represent my people. And that is uh, State Representative Reverend Kimberly Daniels um, out of Florida. You know, Florida is at this point now where... Uh, at least on the surface, it looks like. And obviously, you got to be very careful how you take information because you got two warring sides, two warring factions amongst the same clan that are presenting things in different lights to gain ground. I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about politicians, and I'm talking about specifically about Democrats and Republicans. Okay, we already know that that's a red state. So whenever you get something, you got to be very careful of the origin because it's coming from more than likely a Democrat who's trying to paint it in a certain light to build certain momentum. Uh, we've gotten to the point, especially when it comes to black people, that we are not. They don't even attempt to sway us with anything of substance. Substance. They sway us with. They're being racist again. At least I'm not a Republican. At least I'm not Trump. And are the ever famous, the lesser of two evils. I don't give a fuck about the lesser of two evils. Excuse my French. I am who I am. 
and I'm in one of them spaces right now. I don't give a fuck about the lesser two evil. I don't want no evil. I'm not giving my damn vote to no evil. You're going to show me what you're going to do for me. You're going to show me how you're going to be held accountable for what you're going to do for me. And you're going to expect me to come for your ass when you don't do it. And if you can't, can't come with that, I'm not voting for you. I know damn right for the last 60 years we've been voting for Democrats and ain't got jacked for it. Don't mean I'm voting for Republicans. It just means that I'm not going to be played by Dems just saying I'm not a Republican. That ain't good enough for me. Shit, neither am I. So what the... I need you to show me what you're going to do. And they can't. They have never produced anything. Because producing stuff for us, again, is not productive in the total scope of what they're trying to do. But this lady is supposed to be, first of all, a black Christian pastor. Got to watch that evangelical stuff. Because white, evangelic, uh, white ev evangelicalism doesn't just come from white people. They always prop up blacks that will say what they want us to hear because we'll receive it. This broad has been going around preaching sermons in black churches that slavery was beneficial to black people. And she's preaching to the ignorance of overly religious, religious minded blacks that's been heavily inundated with religion versus spirituality and the sight of understanding their relationship with God. So anything that sounds anything other than that, they lose their freaking mind. They'll go, it's amazing how powerful this religious thing is when you're able to manipulate it and use it. And I can't get into it because I don't have the time, but we've been manipulated with it for so long that None of, very few of us are really truly operating in the true scope of God's design for our lives because we're too busy trying to stay within the lines drawn for us uh, and, 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 and prove that we belong there. And that's not even how it works, but okay. She is sitting up talking about it is a blessing. She says slavery was a blessing she says it, 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 because if it wasn't for slavery she'll probably still be in Africa somewhere praying to a tree first of all it's extremely disrespectful to African spirituality it's extremely arrogant uh, which is a major issue and problem for Christians the arrogance of it's just us if it ain't us you ain't crap you, you stupid uh, and the idea that you actually can evangelize somebody by insulting them that's the first thing so but then you know then the idea of uh, i still be in africa playing to a tree i mean go show me somewhere in africa where somebody's praying to a tree right now africa has some of the most beautiful cities africa has some of the most thriving uh places. africa is the most richest continent in minerals and resources in the world. Africa is the birthplace of some of the most greatest minds ever. And yet this is what she is saying and she's saying it because she is being rewarded for it. Don't fool yourself. There are some delusional people. There are some people that are absolutely 100% delusional, but I tr trust me when I tell you whether she's delusional or not, she's taking this stance because there is a benefit for her to take this stance. And she's willing to get out there and do it because her God isn't God. Her God is her money or her political clout or her political career or, or, or a combination of that and the bag. But she's chasing something that she thinks they can give her and she's championing and parroting the very thing that um, the very thing that uh, they're pushing with this idea they've been trying to soften slavery for a long time they've been you know uh, they, 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 we had to stop it in Texas they had to take they try to put textbooks out saying that slaves were involuntary immigrants uh you know, or migrant workers. I mean, they, everything except you kidnapped my fucking people and brought us over here and built your wealth and advanced the growth of your country off of the backs of my people, killed a bull, but they're not going to do that, right? 
So again, that's this thing that we, we I'm, I'm coming for I'm coming for her. I'm telling you right now, y'all can get ready. I'm coming for her with every freaking thing I got because that's the kind of person I'm telling you about. I'm coming for her like I came from Steve Harvey. I'm coming for her like I came from Jason Whitlock. Anytime you show me you absolutely have no regard for my people, that is not just a difference in philosophy. Oh, I'm coming for you. Difference in philosophies, you're never gonna see me beef with those people. We can have different philosophies, but if I believe you love our people. You're just going about it in a different way. I'm gonna show you love. I'm gonna big up you and I'm gonna back you. Because we don't have to think alike. We have to think for the same thing. Now, this person doesn't have blacks in, in, in mind. She has a career. She has connecting with the po people in power because she believes that's how she's going to get. And she's too, got, she's too stupid to realize that history shows that once they use you and they get what they want out of you, they chew you up, spit you out, and throw you away. And it's coming. You'll hear about her crashing and burning a year from now, whenever, after they done got what they could out of it. Either she's pushed through what they want to push through, or she failed to push through what they want to push through. And either way, she's tossed. So that is that. Finally, man, big ups to uh, my girl Jess Hilarious, the comedian. Uh, for being vocal and standing up for black women when it comes to this strong, assaultive, unrelenting push from the transgender community. Again, I've said this from the beginning. I have my opinion about all of this sexual identity thing. Number one, I think it's way too out in the forefront. It's a private matter. It should be dealt with within privacy. And I believe that everybody has a right to move how they want to move in their bedroom. Uh, whether I agree with it or not, but I have a right to disagree with it. And I've given my opinion on it. This isn't about my opinion. My This is about how there's nothing I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure there's something I can't stand more than this. But right now, I can't think, I can't stand a sensitive bully. What do I mean? Somebody that's always offended, but always picking on people. You want somebody to feel you, somebody to give you space, to give you your space to be what you want to do. We give it to you. What do you do? You want to take more. You want to take more. Now you, you're actually assaulting and attacking women because they are cherishing something precious, that cycle of life that you cannot emulate. And let me let, let me explain something to you. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Then I'm going to get off of here. Then I would normally go because they're, they're breaking it down to talking about a woman's period. And black and women have gotten to the point where they don't feel they have much to hold on to anymore because they've been now designated not as women but as cis women, and so that you can still fit other types of women in this. And we're all women collectively. No, this is what's going on. If you want to be considered a transgendered woman, you are a transgendered woman. I'm not gonna argue with that. I don't believe transgendered women should be competing against biological female. Absolutely not. And there's a bunch of physiological, scientific data that backs that up. I've written on it. I've talked about it. Um, and whatever. What I'm talking about here is the, 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 the purity of what's born and what cannot be emulated. You can declare, I identify all you want to. And I'm going to support you in identifying. And what did you want to identify? But don't assault the woman who is born into this unique and precious place that is so important to the overall survival of humanity. And when I'm talking about my black sisters, the overall survival of our race rests so heavily upon her spiritual and her physical, her physical and her spiritual womb. And to see it assaulted in such a way, and when I say spiritual, uh, physical and spiritual womb, here's what I mean. See, no matter how much you try to say this, Born being a biological male, a biological male versus a biological female, and these things that I identify as man and woman is uniquely different. And you can't squash it, you can't marginalize it. Men operate on a 24 hour cycle, women operate on a 28 day cycle. Men literally cycle through their entire process within a 24 hour period. We wake up in, with the highest level of testosterone in the morning. 
makes us aggressive, makes us hungry, makes us ready to go out and do what we got to do to do what it is we're supposed to do. We, met, we As the testosterone levels drop, we are more, moving more into our rational state where we start to be able to uh, strategize and rationalize. This is what we, the best time for us to make our decisions. We move on and then later on in the evening, this is why most men talk so much about peace because after that process, we're in a state now where we just want to unwind so that we can go into a good night's sleep so what we can do it all over again. Because when you're sleeping is when your testosterone levels start to restore themselves. This is a 24 hour cycle. Women don't work that way. Women have literally, the sun is a 24 hour cycle. The sun circles the earth. Uh, uh, well, the earth rotates 24 hours. So you see the sun in a 24 hour circle. Uh, so then that, that that's the man the woman operates almost dot i mean exactly like the moon 28 28 days each week is a different place she's in this blood that you call a period this menstruation cycle is the body ridding itself of all the things uh not just the seed not just the ovum not just the egg but all of the things that have accumulated and it's releasing and it's refreshing and it's restarting and this is the simple version of it but what i'm trying to tell you this is a spiritual uh reality so a woman goes through these different cycles and over this time a person born a male can never emulate that you know i i i had to address about six years ago they're talking about boys having periods no the bleeding that comes from a period is the is a part of the ending of this cycle. And then you go through the cycle. You go through it again. You come through it. You come through the refresh period. Eventually, you get through ovulation, which is your reproductive time of your cycle. Men are on a 24-hour reproductive cycle. All of these different things change how your mind speaks. The woman's, uh, depending on where she's in that cycle, her hippocampus, her pleasure and memory center, all this stuff is different. So that's why she goes through these moods. It's not emotional disruption, it's emotional specificity. And so again, this whole idea, but I wanna speak up to the sister because in her, in her own way, she came and she said what she had to say and get off of it, do your thing. This isn't about hatred, this is about hate. You don't get to do your thing and then step on mine. And I think that's one of the problems with what's going on with the LGBTQ community LGBTQ community in, in in general is you don't want you don't just want to have the right to be you you want to crush anybody that doesn't agree with you you want to carve out a space where you're dominant and what's going to eventually happen is people are going to get tired of getting pushed around and they're going to start pushing back and they're not going to just push back to say you can you can't have any more ground they're going to start pushing back to take what you took be very careful. Be very careful. But like I said to my sisters, nothing like a black woman. And I, when I say woman, I mean woman. It's nothing like a black woman. To everybody else, how you identify is ultimately your business. But please believe you don't have the right to force it upon nobody. You, just like you want someone to respect you, you're gonna have to respect others. It's that simple. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Again, as I said in the beginning, if you believe in the work we're doing, you're probably looking at like, this dude's a doctor. Yeah, I have dual doctorates, actually. Uh, and I could actually be pretty uh, eloquent in my presentations. This just wasn't one of those days. And I don't, pre I, I don't present falsely. I'm who I am. You're going to see me nine times out of ten in the summer in a shirt t-shirt uh short sleeve t-shirt uh tat showing earrings on uh that's who i am uh in the few times i have to clean up i clean up well uh but i lead with my intellect my experience my wisdom and my ability to make things happen i don't have to do that uh my my, my mentor told me a long time ago because i don't like wearing suits i don't like conformity I don't, I don't conform well at all. You're not gonna make me be what you want me to be and do what you want me to do. That's why I've been a business owner the vast majority of my life because 
I'm going to move the way I want to. But he told me, he says, if you want to really be successful in a world that wants to dictate how you move and you don't want to move that way, you're going to have to understand this one truth. He who has the goal makes the rules. So I went out and I got the goal. The goal is the knowledge. The goal is the experience. The goal is the capacity to make things happen. The goal is the love of my people to help them get to places they can't get by themselves. I went out and got the goal in business so that people who look, don't look like me need me. They have to deal with me the way I want to come. And I got it good enough to where if they don't want to deal with me, I'm good with it. You're not going to force my hand. Now, if you, it's a thing and everybody's showing up and it's a formal dinner or it's something like that, if it's a wedding or whatever, you know, I, I put on a whole damn tuxedo for my for my daughter's debutante ball. But those are my babies, you know, again, they the boss of me. They are the boss of me. But other than that, you know, I'm going to be me and I'm going to let you be you. Throw your three pre suit on. I'm going to tell you how tight you, sharp you are. And then every blue moon, I'm going to throw one on so I can be just as sharp and tight as you. I just choose to do it a different way. And that's good. Everybody's who they are. Everybody's got to live their lives. Be My thing is, it, at the end of the day, it's not going to be what you wear. It's not going to be what you drove. It's not going to be where you live. It's going to be what you did. What kind of impact you had in this world. What Whose lives you touched in this world. That's what's going to matter. The legacy that you're writing with your life each and every day is what's going to matter because that's the only thing going to be left to speak of you when you're gone. So I'm writing a legacy. What are you writing? On that note, if you believe in what we're doing, go to the description box. Find out how you can give and show some love. Other than that, I'm out of here. Take care.